it's absolutely hilarious. So my girl Peggy Goo, or our girl Peggy Goo, the scenes Peggy Goo, the much deride, the much antagonized, much abused, the much ridiculed, much praised, the much loved, the much adored and followed. Peggy Goo sat down with resident advisor. Kind of absolutely hilarious because just the other day, just the other day, just the other day, RA were there trying to uh, LARP as an advocate for the working class by talking about how hard it is to break into electronic music if you're from working class areas. And then you've got somebody like Peggy Goo, who is the complete complete opposite of that of course which is nice which is great but i just find that contrast to be utterly fantastic and utterly hilarious but regardless the interview itself was absolutely hilarious with resident advisor exchange out there in ade i think if i'm not mistaken it was meant to be filmed but then it didn't get put out i remember seeing something about it and maybe I'm, I'm not mistaken i remember checking on it and thinking it wasn't going to be available it never got put out then suddenly it came out now so maybe some things got edited maybe they want to put on video because video may be spread more easy and when it's audio type of stuff it can kind of get left by the way so because no one's going to sit down here and listen to a 50 minute Peggy Goo interview apart from me like an idiot I did actually listen to it and there's some really funny pieces that I want to pull out here that for hilarious quotes that I've written down in my flipping um, notes here up here that I'm going to read to you but she says at the beginning of the or somewhere in the middle of the pod I do my own Instagram I don't have a manager right which I was thinking was hilarious because I think she was saying it in a way of like she's really hard working I do my own Instagram what a big deal and the manager thing again it's not that big of a deal either especially if you've got a booking agent they kind of your quasi manager anyway having a manager you know taking money in your pocket and a booking agent taking money in your pocket is a little bit dumb so you should probably only have one um that can maybe cover both sort of you know areas that makes complete sense but her kind of flexing that she does her instagram was making me absolutely laugh there was a common theme throughout the entire interview of her saying say no say no say no to opportunities which i thought was utterly bizarre but i guess when it comes to these sort of programs these sort of sorry these sort of panel discussions or these sort of q and a's and interviews it's primarily an opportunity for her to speak her piece so her issue her you know um, stumbling blocks her hurdles and clearly saying no beforehand was an issue for her so now she's getting to this, she got to this point in life this awakening where now she said no and suddenly she feels more free and feels more empowered but I just found it funny contrast of her basically in a weird way giving herself a pat on the back that she's so in demand and so you know well loved and people want to book her all over the place that she's having to turn down these illustrious gigs right <laughs> to maintain their mental health and the purity of her artistry when you contrast that to what's happening in the real world if you're not a you know world touring dj out there that's super popular for many people myself included just getting free gigs is hard out there because of the changing landscape of the world and nightlife and whatnot that's completely changed post pandemic right i was somebody that was playing every single weekend in my little local area of cocktail bars and pubs and breweries i was there playing in the corner you know to a crowd of flipping two every weekend and then suddenly it completely dried up post pandemic so clearly that's an issue for most of us i would assume out there who are not in the top five one percent of people who get to tour around the world so her basically gloating as she's saying no was absolutely hilarious in that regard there's a really funny bit also where she said everyone wanted me to do edm which was hilarious and she also used that as something to kind of boast about which i guess if you're somebody of her level that is something to kind of be somewhat proud of because you'd imagine especially when she first burst on the scene and she was flipping everywhere that easy cash grab of dipping into the adm bag edm bag like what fred again is doing with skrillex and all that sort of stuff is really tempting and easy because that money is quick and easy and it can propel you to a bit of stardom that you're probably never going to get just occupying the kind of scene circuit you know if you hang around a skrillex long enough and diplo you might end up you know catching a case but you also might end up you know catching a quick little cheeky grammy nomination because you decide to go oots at oots at or leave somebody a cheeky voicemail on the on their phone like what fred again fucking rinses right that could also happen you never know so i understand your law so maybe her saying no to edm was a big deal so big up her for that one i do like the bit that she says generally do like that she mentioned how important boiler room deck mantle was to her career because for whatever reason maybe it's because of you know tory nature privileged nature of the founders who founded boiler room which is again not their fault it is what it is i still think you know a guy from that kind of background deciding to flip and muck it up or muck in with us regular schmegular normies here on the ground level is definitely good taking that money from daddy and mummy and investing it back into the scene and building this amazing platform that's basically self-sufficient that he stepped away from it now if I'm not mistaken I think you're sort of dice so that guy's not even involved I've got his name tall skinny white dude with curly hair but he stepped away from it but I always thought regardless of his background and what he does unless it's kiddie diddling and shit I don't really care if he's rich and he's got weird opinions or he's a Tory I still think the platform itself has done more good for the scene than it's done negative because I've seen people's careers I think of somebody like a Jada G who also had her issues about you know um, how she's represented how she's looked at in terms of a DJ and having too many people maybe oogle her and you know see her as a sex object but she, even she mentions in her interviews how important that Dick Man 
environmental boiler room set it was and i think there's many people out there that would say the same thing that boiler room these kind of platforms do change your trajectory of your career because they immediately you know you've got these metrics that could be used from booking agents and venues justify booking you you got the ability to play in front of a new audience you've got the ability to play in front of kind of people that in the industry themselves who might recommend you to different people all these things take place and for whatever reason the commander seems to be a place that attracts a lot of punters a lot of kind of consumers um customers like myself and people that actually work in the industry so uh, clearly those kind of platforms can go a long way to kind of propelling your career so the fact that she gave boiler room credit for that was really good considering how people love to hate boiler room nowadays she spoke about her that viral video that happened a few months back i think of her playing i think it's somewhere in greece i think it's greece she's playing somewhere in greece she plays her hit record starry night <laughs> unfortunately has aged terribly aged terribly it kind of reminds me of that track with the maria maria sample dj Khaled did with rihanna that aged terribly too i think i remember when that dropped thinking oh my god this is amazing and then by the next day i think if i'm not mistaken it dropped on like a thursday and if i'm not mistaken i was playing somewhere on a friday night and i swear on my life i went to go play out on a friday in a place where they would you know receive that track well and after the first verse and chorus died I was like wow this tune's already dying so it already got rinsed in like a space of a day it got rinsed already and you know it kind of died a slow death and i think the same thing happened to starry night but anyway there's a video of peggy goo playing somewhere whatever venue she's playing is really weird because the dj booth is kind of like in the middle and everyone's kind of surrounding her in a sort of daytime sort of thing and she's playing and doing her peggy goo dancing and you know trying to be cute and mysterious and artistic and having fun behind the booth and doing a thing which is admirable and everyone's just like staring at her recording a video as she's dancing there and it looks funny and weird because obviously everyone's just standing and staring at her but it's kind of a reflection of her crowds overall go and look at videos online of her playing lately and unfortunately just because of her star level and maybe because she's attractive i don't know people just stand and stare you see a lot of things happening we see that a lot happening with um nina kravitz Look at videos of Nina Kravitz, especially when you play in places like Italy and shit. You just see like row after row, the same looking white Italian guy right, with dark hair, with his smartphone, just staring at her as she's playing. And she's doing her best like Nina Kravitz thing, right? With her, with her high-waisted shorts, right? It's tucked in t-shirt, like doing her thing. And no one's, they're just staring at her. And I don't know if they're just staring at her waist, if they're just admiring her face, who knows? Definitely there's something that happens when you become really popular where you attract this normie crowd who just stand in with their iphone just you know staring at you through the, the, the iphone screen unfortunately but i liked how she said that wasn't my responsibility it's like um it kind of is isn't it like you become so big that unfortunately you've kind of lost contact with quote unquote real ravers or the underground as she hates to say and now you've kind of got these fans who are just there to kind of you know capture you on their smartphone show their friends that they're you know that they have an asian <laughs> friends or people that they like from their community and then that's it but they're not really caring too much about your artistry in any way shape or form i thought that was hilarious but i thought this bit in the interview was super super funny where she mentions something to do about her haters and her critics I guess the question kept getting asked the same way different times and then finally the mask slipped off right she her real self popped out which i've always believed this to be the fact i've always believed that underneath all this kind of like i don't really care sort of stuff there's this person underneath her that's just like fuck you i'm collecting money do you know what i mean i'm getting to the bag like i think there's a real cold heart not cold hearted there's a real cold business woman behind that mask of like being the happy dj dancing having a good time wearing fashionable clothes there's like no no i'm getting to the bag like i'm i mean i know what okay i see this business i see how this works i'm collecting the bag you guys speaking all this stuff about me online it's all noise it's all flipping static it's all white noise doesn't matter i'm getting to the bag i'm getting to the bag but they kept asking the same question all the time about haters and about you know critics and whatnot and she had this very interesting thing to say which is a good indication of what her priorities are when it comes to teaching yeah? and it's all about the money money dollar 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 bills yeah or artists being put into boxes by you know 
Yeah. Whoever. And let's not forget all those on people who call themselves on the ground. When they get the same offer as what I do, do you think they will say no? It is going to be very, very hard to say no indeed. Oh, by the way, that moderator was fucking annoying. She did a terrible job, which is a shame because she was so good at moderating the flipping Discord panel back in the day. I remember listening to her ages ago. It's like a three hour panel. Honestly, I lift up, I listen to Waste Time on. It was like a three hour panel when Discord went through their issues with, you know, racism and sexism and assault and whatnot with their bounces back whenever it happened. And she moderated that panel and she did a pretty decent job of trying to pull as much as you could from the owners and founders who were not being the most you know cooperative in that kind of situation but i feel like this entire fucking interview she was really wanting to flipping tongue down peggy it was a real licking of her ass it was flipping quite nauseating to witness to be honest but hey it is what it is but i thought that was a hilarious answer that she read it there right if all these people that that believed to be underground had the same gigs that I was getting offered. Would they be saying? Would they be saying no? Kind of thing. It's like, but that's the whole point, isn't it? Of people <laughs> criticizing you and people of your ilk is that you know the wealth and the gigs and the big monies are only accrued at the top. No one's paying some underground DJ that doesn't look like you <laughs> to play for Nike for like forty. Why did she pay? Was it forty grand, a hundred grand, whatever that was back in the day? Whenever it was it maybe that was the whole point. But I love the I love that she missed the point completely and said that you know they would all play for the same money that I would be paid for if, if they wanted to do it. Which you know it's funny because it clearly shows that what her intentions are and where the main priorities lie in this thing. You know, because some people out there don't necessarily want to play for money. They want to play in cool places. They want to connect to cool crowds. They want to go to cool interesting things. But hey whatever it is there was a question uh, on the interview regarding influence she was like oh yeah i use my platform to be a positive influence which i thought was dumb because she didn't have anything to say and again that's nothing also i need to point out she did come across a bit dense it's not her fault because none you know we don't have we'll have a talent for public speaking english is her second language it might be something lost in translation but i thought overall what this did do was reaffirm my long held but oftentimes fall and belief that i kind of slip and backslide and make a mistake to break but in general i've always said you should never idolize or celebrate djs outside of just what they do behind the decks you should never even want to get to know them and i've made the mistake of doing it myself especially when it comes to people that i find new or you find that you may be attractive or maybe you want to just dig in and find more about them and communicate with them and you start to realize that oh you're a bit of a wanker innit? you're a bit of a div innit? you're a bit of a c-u-n-t and it doesn't necessarily sit right and for me i don't know about you but but sometimes if you meet people or you kind of eat meet them and they come off a bit, you know, they come off like a cunt, it's hard to then listen to their mix or be a fan of their music or support them anyway. It kind of taints it. So knowing that most people you know myself included have cunty things about us i would much rather just leave it to one side all that stuff and just focus on the music alone so i feel like these kind of interviews if anything they don't really serve these djs any well to be honest unless you're you know unless you can speak well unless you're an interesting person it's not really gonna work and for something like a peggy goo like outside of djing and wearing cool clothes like what is she really doing day to day that would make her an interesting or compelling person to listen to what life experiences does she have that would actually would actually warrant having a sit down you know of an hour plus interview that would actually be of any kind of value i say absolutely none and maybe that again isn't her fault because you know if you're somebody that's a specialist in a particular field you have to dedicate a lot of your time to the art that you're doing day to day you're touring all the time listen to music producing you know mixing blah 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 there's not enough time to be reading books and you know watching movies or going to far-flung places or hanging out with friends concert on the grind so clearly you're a bit one-track minded but i've got to say she did come across incredibly incredibly dense so there were parts where they were trying to probe her to you know be a bit more introspective and to maybe open up a little bit and it was just like there was nothing there maybe it could be pr because she didn't want to get involved in you know talking about societal political issues which again it's funny considering all the madness that she did during um what's it called during the pandemic do you remember that all the play graves the most iconic one i think i may have here she went um, to russia to celebrate nina kravis's birthday or her birthday a business tessional of course um having a record of the entire thing and i think this was during like the peak of the pandemic again we now know a pandemic was a whole launch of a whole bunch of nonsense they clearly you know uh pulled a fast us on us pulled a fast one on us especially when it comes to the covid passports and the face masks all this nonsense but when we were in full hysteria when we were all panicking we were all scared our grandmothers would be dying and stuff because people couldn't stay inside and not go for a rave not go to a rave for a couple of months these people were flying all over the place and partying in places where the restrictions weren't as tight, where people were maybe obfuscating the numbers and whatnot, go to third world countries, another far playing places. And for whatever reason, they decided to go to flipping Nina Travis's home country and have a good time and post all these pictures all over Instagram. And, you know, the party happened in some sort of palace. 
private party behind closed doors pcr test for all the famous people social distancing not coming close to the decks and stuff that sort of, sort of bullshit it was absolutely hilarious so maybe this is the reason why she doesn't want to get involved in political type issues but clearly they're trying to probe her, but it wasn't really working that well in that regard there's actually a clip actually here they uploaded on twitter that's got a bit of her actually talking that I actually play she says I'm going to tell you things that you can't google and she tells absolutely nothing that's actually the meme I've got from this whole entire interview she gave us absolutely nothing you see the same face that she's giving you now like she's kind of dead behind the eyes that's what you got from the interview it was absolutely nothing you got there from her whatsoever there's not much going on there in the mind of Miss Peggy Goo but this clip is courtesy of Resident Advisor which kind of you know gives you a sneak peek of what she sounds like and what she had to say I'm also aware sometimes I get shit for my uh, like mm -hmm. the crowd's reaction or their behavior for example recently there was a video of me playing my hit and funny enough that's the moment that i want everyone to dance but this is the moment where everybody stopped dancing and taking a video and i remember the one time in new york i think it was a time where everybody just stopped dancing and i thought it was like black mirror funny because in this segment she says something like it's not my responsibility that the crowd is not dancing it's like, isn't that the whole premise of a dj is that to go into a space and basically make the people go from left to right two step dance jump scream shout faint that's the whole premise that's the whole responsibility and job description of a dj so the fact that she's saying now at this point of her career if people just stand there and google her through a phone that's not her responsibility is really bizarre that's not even the long and short of it the funniest thing i thought for me was this quote when it comes to responsibility you shouldn't voice it you should feel related to the subject so i think she was kind of trying to say you shouldn't be doing performative stuff online you should be living it and breathing it by your actions which again i don't understand how that makes sense maybe her way of showing that she's allied to black people and stands with black lives matter is supposed to picture of her and seth trucks or something i don't really know but i thought that was absolutely bizarre comment to make and then it follows on from that one which is the funniest one which i think is always a comment people make who don't really stand for anything and don't really have anything to offer the world apart from what they do their expertise which again is not a bad thing but i feel like those people they get asked too much to kind of you know give us your opinion on this on that when really all they want to do is take sexy pictures they want to wear cool clothes they want to play music they want to hang out buy new nice things go on nice holidays and that's okay but when you try and push them to be advocates for certain things or speak to certain things it can be a real disappointment and she said the following you say something people give you shit you don't say something they give you shit which again like i said is a classic quote from people that don't have anything to say don't really stand on anything they say oh if i say something that i get shit if i don't say something i get shit i think you heard kim kardashian say it recently but i just feel like you know just maybe shut up and don't really get involved and i also love the fact that she got this quote from harvey i guess she's got a relationship or spoke to dj harvey and um dj harvey basically gave her some advice in terms of how to deal with haters and he said something like oh like if they're talking about you it's a good thing they're talking about you which is funny because i think from dj harvey's point of view his haters are completely different to haters maybe you would describe Peggy Goo as having right there's people maybe who feel like she's got propelled to a level her talent maybe doesn't deserve maybe they feel like her come up was made easy based on her upbringing and the privileges that she was basically allotted to maybe they feel like it was a woman thing whatever whoever the issue is but there's a lot of I feel like I won't say justifiable but there's a lot of there's probably a lot of um weight to a lot of the criticism behind peggy whether you like her or not there is some legit criticism that maybe can be pointed to her as her and how her career has been navigated through whatever she's done it's not nothing to do with what dj harvey went through and if anything the dj harvey quote was more to do with how he had to kind of combat against people you know especially the chin strokers especially people that maybe thought he was a little bit too niche and maybe took himself way too seriously when it comes to music and his obsession with not maybe releasing set lists of what he played and hiding you know the label of the track he's played all this sort of stuff that you know a lot of the chin strokers shazam type people when they first popped up on the scene were getting offended by is not really similar to anything that peggy is going to going through in terms of maybe some of the criticism she gets and anyway forget the criticism she probably gets more love than criticism anyway because she's one of the biggest DJs out there in the world, right? She's got millions of followers, I'd assume. Maybe the millions. Let's actually check. I've got Instagram loaded up here. Is it millions? Is it millions? It should be millions. You wouldn't let's yeah, that's it. 2.7 million actually followers she's got on Instagram. So, you know, this whole idea that you're getting all this hate from people is a little bit, a little bit dramatic and a little bit you know worries me when really and truly you have more love than haters because clearly you're booked and busy and thriving out here thriving 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 despite you know the limited output and whatnot but i thought that was funny but the best bit for sure for sure was the q a there was a bit where the moderator got a bit pissed off at some lady that was sharing a pretty nice i thought story and anecdote that related to peggy it's like oh have you got your question hurry up it's like bro just let her breathe 
she's gonna get to it chill that was funny but i thought the best bit definitely came with some lady towards the end who i think was asian i think she might have been chinese and she said something along the lines of like hey i'm also asian and i wanted to know like how do you overcome your hurdles and difficulties in your career and peggy's immediate response is like oh i have many difficulties please specify or please be more precise like all right sorry you're the champion you're the world you're the world cup winner of problems sorry i, I didn't know that we only have four you have 17 my bad uh, <laughs> and it was funny because clearly from the person's question that was i think asian it was clearly like hey i'm also from you know this part of the world where traditionally girls aren't really meant to do these type of jobs and maybe family members won't really be encouraging or supportive of you deciding to stop your studies to do this. so it kind of required an answer like hey when i was coming up even though i came because the thing that you see a lot i think of it there was clearly an idea in her head maybe to avoid actually speaking the truth and saying how she actually came up legitimately which again i don't think is an issue i don't think the fact that she comes from a rich family that afforded her the ability to kind of gallivant around london and berlin and do what she wanted and figure out life through that way and whatnot i don't think that's a bad thing everyone's got their way of going forward like you know just because you interned at a record label um you know for nothing for seven years and that's how you got your come up it doesn't mean your come up story is any better than hers everyone's got their journey but for whatever reason she's very resistant and hesitant to talk about it maybe because it's a private life she doesn't talk about it but i feel like that's an important part to put out there so that you can give people perspective of how your journey kind of got to where you got to because you know giving that nonsense anecdotal advice can kind of feel a bit vague and a bit wishy-washy and a bit kind of you know um for the sake of just saying it so i feel like with that girl that she, she asked that question it kind of required maybe a, a, an answer like hey even though i had the privileges afforded to me that i could take more chances because my parents had this whatever and it gave me the opportunity to do what i need to do it's still a situation where maybe you have to show and prove so maybe you know she could say something like oh you know to convince my parents to give me a chance i told them i'd take a year off of school and after that i'd go back to it but obviously i was never going to go back to it and i really made sure in that year i did everything i could i emailed this that it would just require a little bit more introspection a little bit more depth a little bit more you know pulling out from a personal story because she at the beginning of the interview she's like oh i'm gonna say stuff in this interview you can't google and it's like what couldn't we google yeah you know i mean there wasn't much to really say because again like i said she has a you know a bit of a personality of a cardboard box but i feel like a lot of it is purposefully guarded because she doesn't want to put out certain things because you don't want the perception of her to change but it's like look you've already got 2.7 million fans people love you the way you are it doesn't matter if you say you're a princess it doesn't matter if you say you you know you grew up in the flipping in some rice field somewhere people are still going to love you so it's not going to change anything so i thought that was a bit of a shame that she didn't really try and connect asian to asian and provide that lady with a little bit more insight of how she can maybe deal with it culturally societally in terms of kind of dealing with how to pursue a career in music and whatnot so that didn't really work out too well but i thought the best one was definitely the question that somebody asked about ghana that was pretty cool some person popped up and said i'm from ghana we'd love to invite you down she said yeah i'd be down to come and you can maybe play alongside me or something i thought that was a sweet moment so that was pretty cool to see personal artists like you know they went to put an underground event in bookta which is you know a bit of an oxymoron but i thought that was pretty cool regardless and then the end point actually she also said something like oh she wants to create timeless music so that's maybe maybe think what might answer why the question was a bit why the whole interview was a bit weird and a bit cagey because maybe she's at a point in her career now if or maybe that's why it also might explain why she kept rambling on about the fucking no thing about not saying no so about saying no all the time maybe she's reached a point of her career now where she started to realize that she made some mistakes of being open and ready to do everything and anything in a pursuit of trying to make it and trying to be famous and trying to make money and trying to get more gigs and playing all these cool clubs maybe she's really it kind of backfired a little bit because now the places that she actually wants to play at they don't want to take her because she's maybe stained and tainted from all these other places again i'm just hypothesizing here no insight just me being a partner for me that's i looking in maybe that's how she's seen it and maybe also starring that so it's a good example in that that track hasn't aged well so her being as popular as she is and also being the contribute professional she plays her hits which is something i have to give her credit for similar to jeff mills jeff mills probably hates the bells to this day he's probably bored of playing it but every gig that i've ever heard every gig that i've ever been where i've seen jeff mills play he always plays the bells so i feel like peggy Goo is a concert professional she turns up she's on time she's not fucked up she plays her tracks and play starry night does her little sexy dance behind the stage and pop and dives off to a black escalate somewhere and goes back to a hotel room so she does that thing but i can imagine it's probably driving her crazy playing that song so clearly she's in a point where she's like you know what i want to make timeless music i want to be a legit artist so when i look back on my career i can be proud of work i've done i think she even mentioned something along the lines of somebody saying yeah i forgot who said it to her but someone said to her as advice um take your time with your music 
because your discography is going to be with you forever which is a quite sage advice like don't rush tracks and just put them out for the sake of it because you know that discography lasts forever it's going to be here when you're far gone and you don't want to have like duds in your flipping um discography if you don't need to have so clearly that's a conscious thing she's kind of mulling over but like i said originally at the beginning it was a pretty underwhelming interview there wasn't much shared in it that you wouldn't really be able to get outside of google if you're not really that much interested in her i think she came across a little bit um lacking in self-awareness she came across a little bit in her own world which again makes sense because i remember some people telling me this when i was getting into scene heavy meeting the big big djs it's like that like you'd realize that they're not really quite all there in the head they're kind of in their own little bubble um they kind of you know they don't really some of them don't even know what's going on around the world in terms of news because they're just locked in completely to what they're doing in terms of living this kind of fast life playing music doing drugs drinking flying all around the world it's no real time to kind of get plugged in with what's happening in real society and kind of getting a kind of plug on things so it's a bit strange talking to me and i feel like you got it a little bit with this peggy Goo interview obviously the moderator didn't really help because it wasn't really probing interview questions or anything it was a little bit like softball questions she clearly you know was licking her ass and maybe a little bit what you call it starstruck with somebody that big's talking to her at ad i'm not really too sure but i thought that didn't really help and overall peggy's answers to the q and a's at the end which i thought the questions were pretty solid and decent and we'll probably should have listed some interesting responses were very flat and kind of you know meh whatever it may be so again it could be because this is a new version of her she's trying to push out there she's trying to maybe pull away and not give people too much but i thought it was a little bit lame and a little bit flat and kind of just you know whatever you would describe you know her instagram to be not to be rude or anything but it's basically just pictures of her staring into the camera somewhere with you know a nice background of the thing in front of a sold out crowd me 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 and that's what you kind of got from the instagram whoever this person is how they present themselves is how you got from sorry how you got from that podcast or that flipping um ade panel discussion it wasn't that much more interesting outside of that which again leads me to believe for the most part if you are fans of djs just be fans of them support the music go and watch them play go and support their albums and their merch or whatever it may be but communicating with them in any kind of way in a human way um, or trying to quote unquote be their friend is definitely going to lead to more heartbreak than anything else and you're probably going to end up not liking the, them as people which is something that i've kind of fell in the trap of doing when i kind of try to be personable with somebody and talk to them and maybe you're kind of oddly flirting whatever you're doing and then it kind of you know you, you kind of just get the feeling the person's a bit of a piece of shit and you're like you know what oh, man this is a shame now you know I, i'm not gonna you know i'm gonna actively avoid any kind of lineup here on because i just don't want to be around that energy so that's a problem but if you just treat them as artists as what they are as people who are meant to be providing you with great you know background music with great soundtracks to your life they may define a certain point in your life a breakup a friendship makeup introduction a new country visited that's when they're really cool that's when they use your tool and also the ability to find new interesting tracks that you kind of dig in deep into and maybe explore into especially when you think of her career and background and stuff she might play a track that might make you get obsessed with k-pop or get obsessed with that side of other things or music sort of folk whatever it may be going forward but like i said a little bit underwhelming a little bit flat um you know not the greatest bubbliest personality in the world and the answers are a bit shit but hey it is what it is it is what it is